Dun, dun, dun. Uncle L here. We're tying crappie jigs and we'll go over choosing a tackle store or the pitfalls of tackle stores or I don't know. So we'll go with the worst case example right now. And what we're, well, my jigs are the worst case examples too. So what happens is we're tying these jigs with the pin springs in them. So if you get the one with four, you get the fine springs and you pull them out of the pin. And what you do is you take your favorite bait, crappie niblets or whatever, and you get the right size and you just scrunch it in there and see that's your body color and you got it with your tail. If you're not feeling that color, you can go with a green, yellow, different crappie niblets. Oh. I guess Uncle L didn't tie that down tight. Um, luckily, he double checked. So we're going to have to refix that one. But pretty much this kills it. And uh, if you want to use different thread for the body, you can change up different colors. And uh, I think this is 210. I think this one's 140. UTC thread and I like to go with just the thickest thread because I just bully it around. Where's my scissors? So this usually spawned out of the bait saver by I can't remember who but their jigs are too big, too small, flimsy. I had a big trout just and straighten the hook. That's how big the trout was. And it was under a bobber. My pole almost flew in. He straightened the hook. So I go, you know what? We need to get better, better hooks. So I went with a different one. Plus you get to make your own tail. Choose your own tail, what you like. Body color, sort of. On that back end. So, all right, let's get into the. I wrote a list down so I'm not all over the place. Uh, I think to me, the biggest fail in stores lately would be Dick's Sporting Goods. And uh, what happened was they used to carry a supply of everything. See, and then you could upsize the jig, put two crappie or three crappie niblets in there. And uh, they used to have a decent selection now i think they went to mostly south bend and something else so very little quality selection and the only reason why i stopped there now is to buy wax worms or everyone sold out of wax worms they have this little cooler by the gun counter that nobody knows about and uh so, one of the best hooks right there, 180th. I'm procrastinating always, so might as well get this done. Looks like I need to tighten that up. We're a little loose. Let's see if it goes out. There we go. That should hold it a little too much, but that's okay. Yeah, that's not moving. So Dick Sporting Goods, yeah, just went by the wayside. They used to carry a lot of ice fishing stuff, different clam jigs, and um, would have a decent clearance. But then all of a sudden, they just stopped, went with their own brand, went with the lower end brand, and mostly mega bass. They have like mega bass stuff in there. So I think it more catered to the bass fishing and the eagle claw hooks. And I don't know if they had any sales recently, but I used to find some good stuff in the sales. 
so then you just go like that your tail curls then you can rewrap and make your tail out the back you put some super glue on this you can chop it down but that's just a little micro tail and you just tie it off and you get your crappie niblet throw it in there I usually do some of these in white and uh, orange. Pink's a good color. So I'm beating up on the stores a little bit. It's unintentional. Pretty sexy. Whoa, oh, oh, oh. that way in my shoe. <laughs> Should have just left it, bent it down, lost my breath. <sighs> All right, enough of dicks. Yeah, they just changed up um, locations or uh, just changed up their gear and not as many good sales. Ah, the next one, Sportsman's. So if you get to know the manager, I think that's half of the battle with most of these. And... Uh, in several stores they used to follow me around you know so it wasn't really customer service per se it was more of what's he jacking and that's probably due to that but it was hilarious so i think the key is to wander the store and if you see somebody throwing this you know where it's at uh you see somebody throwing this you know, ah, oh, that's the Cabela's paddle tail. That's over at that store. And so I do a lot of wandering, seeing what's new. And uh, was we on Sportsman's yet? Sportsman's used to be half decent in ice fishing. This year they sort of skimped. And uh, it was noticeable. Oh, I forgot one big store. And uh, so I'm just like, you know what? They got some ice flies that are bulk. And I think that's what I mostly go for. They have a few glow-in-the-dark fishing poles that are unique. But for the most part, Sportsman's is lacking on customer service unless you're cute and naive you go, oh i'm buying this for my husband then you could find a person but for the most part i don't know i just another case in point is i visit almost everyone in my home state and uh we just went to the one and i would say out of the 20 times we were just there Nobody's talked to us. Ooh, that tail's a little long. Let's see if I can double it back. So you can self-twist that tail. Bring it back. Let's see if we can light wrap it. Oh, we might be able to twist it again. Oh, well. I guess it's going to be a funky tail. I could put some super glue on there. There we go. Let's do a couple wraps, put some super glue on there. Call it good. One, two, three. Broke off. We're going to put some super glue. No, don't be stuck. I try to keep it up in a vertical position so I don't waste too much. Oh no. Where's my towels? And I usually have an old jig laying around. Well, I guess we'll just 
so then you can pull some of that super glue down there and then you can go that way so if you put the super glue on it and glue them together if the tail's too long and they're short striking it you can that was just a goof so plus i popped the thread too short yeah we're just making different random ones who knows if i'll ever use this <laughs> or i put them in a different bag and i find the bag a year later and i'm like there's all those ones but then i've improved to a different version and i'm like ah so where was we at sportsman so they follow me around lack of customer service the one girl's pretty cute and it's just not like hey i just need this brand and this brand or this jig or something but she keeps walking by walking by and that's been over maybe 15 times and then i go back and there's an old guy and he has a bass boat and she's over there on his uh junk talking oh yeah this rod this reel blah 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 if you need a discount let me know and she was over there hooking them up and i'm like what the hell so hit or miss on the customer service but my best guy came out of there or my favorite guy he wouldn't tell me anything or he would tell me stuff like oh i overheard these guys catching walleye over here but then he moved over to Scottsdale or somewhere in the Phoenix area, Arizona area. And I'm like, oh, man. But he was just fun to talk to. He went out of his way to come say something. And after that, it's been just downhill. Or the one manager that actually moved there from a different store, he would just be like, where are they biting at? This and that. And that was funny at the old store he used to work at a mom pop store he goes what does he steal i'm pretty sure he's stealing something and he didn't know the other kid hung out with me a lot and it was hilarious so he always thought i was stealing something let's try a different tail on this so we're gonna go with this micro chenille Chunk that off. And then you just singe the end. That way it doesn't unravel. And it's a little better than this rubber stuff. It keeps its shape more. And there's that. I oh, made Germany. I wonder if they have elves in the forest making these. So then you just wrap. So pretty much the last couple of years, I haven't used much plastic because I just pack my crappie niblet in there. And see that tail is bulletproof. So it just sticks out. Sometimes you have to re-straighten it versus the rubber one. So you just try to get it to the right. There we go. So I would say a little lacking on the customer service. This year they went skimpy on their ice fishing. Uh, they do get new product in, which I like, but they're holding on to the old product. So they used to have good clearances on the old product, but like I say, I wander the aisles and I see different things and they just end up in a bin over here. The different jig tails or tubes or whatever I buy anyway. So shouldn't matter. Yay, another one down. So Sportsman's is okay. Uh, they carry a decent selection of rods, reels. Uh, they have some line. I just got some line put on my reel. But again, that spool was old. And so it's already bad line. Um, I don't know. So-so on the customer service. So unless you know what you're buying or whatever. 
and uh, I have no clue in the fly fishing. Someone's always asking something, and I'm like, they give them a wrong answer, and I'm like, ah, ha, ha. And I actually met one of my fishing buddies, SBBW Hunter, over there, and the same girl. I think she came a manager or something of the store. Same girl walked by him a couple times. Didn't even help him out. He had questions about an ice auger. And uh, didn't help her out. Well, enough barking on sportsmen's. All right, let's go to Cabela's. Cabela's, oh, they just lost the bargain cave. And even though there was really nothing good per se in the bargain cave, it was one of those things where it was hit or miss after ice fishing season. I bought my ice flashers there. I bought an FL-18 for $230. And I bought a FL-8 for, oh, what did I say? $130. And uh, just amazing deals if you knew the cycles of the thing. And I always kept my ear to the floor to see what happens. Come to find out, they had an FLX20 in the back. Ah, number one fan, what's up? FLX20 in the back. So they get, the one guy was saying, it's usually about 50% off retail. And then all of a sudden, they get an additional markdown and I'm like, what? So I'm guessing they got an FLX 20 for like 200 bucks, but yeah, that's my Cabela's the bargain cave. And I just got back from the one in Phoenix where I heard the information. The kid was bragging. He bought a, I think a piranha or something. And he got it for 13 bucks. And I went back there and all the electronics was gone. But 70% off and uh, your employee discount, man, you can't beat that for ice fishing. It's a little out of my range to go to Cabela's. I have two of them. But Cabela's, same deal. Hit or miss on the customer service. Um, they got quite a selection sometimes. The Phoenix one didn't have a big fly shop, which was surprising. Our location is near a Trophy Trout River, so they have a big selection, I think. So that was sort of interesting, seeing a small fly shop. But Bass Pro Shops right down the street or 20 miles away, so maybe that's why they don't. But I think Bass Pro Shops is actually trying to inject their stuff. So I don't know about Cabela's because if they don't do the discounts, eh, who knows? But there is a cute girl there. We never talk fishing. We just always talk life in general. So that makes it half decent. So Cabela's, they do alternate, but they're holding on to stuff a lot more. And I base this off ice fishing stuff. So, yeah. What's next on my list? Ah, oh, Bass Pro. So Bass Pro bought out Cabela's. There's some changes and there's always grumbling. Oh, the Cabela's thing, if it's on their little clearance rack and it's an 88 and the end of the price, it's no longer going to be continued. And I think my Wapsies were 88. And they made a Cabela's brand of these small 180th jigs. So that's a good thing to know. I think the clearance is probably the best way to gauge a store. Because you know they get everything in new. Bass Pro Shop first went there in Vegas. Oh man. Vegas is the number one stop I think. They got this big old fish tank. Sturgeons. Uh just massive waterfalls for the sturgeons ducks swimming around with the sturgeon uh big old crappie in the middle tank you had to go towards the casino and then in the casino i think it's called silverton 
They have this mermaid show with salt water. Man, you can't ask for more. But again, I think Bass Pro Shops is going towards their own product. So that at my Cabela's right now, it's all Bass Pro Shop spinners. So they have like two aisles of spinners. And I'm like, you don't need two aisles of spinners. And uh, they're coming out with the Bass Pro Shop hooks. The Cabela's rip cord line, the braided line is crappy. I don't know. Yeah, it's just one of those Bass Pro Shops in Vegas. Go check it out. Everywhere else is pretty cool. Ample supply. Uh, customer service, I would say hit or miss. Someone always comes by and says something, but I don't think they're always wandering around, and it's about 30% if you're going to get customer service in Cabela's, but if you know what you're looking for, I guess not. Uh, the last of the big box stores, which I think is going to win um, pretty much all the time is uh, Shields. Shields. Well, let me go back on that. So Shields, whoa, too much, too much. Oh, don't get in the vice. Gonna have a oh saved it. Oh so shields got the Ferris wheel. <laughs> I don't know if I can go on the Ferris wheel. Oh sticky fingers. Got it on the tail. So shields, I can't fit on the Ferris wheel. But at least they got a Ferris wheel in most, I think, in my location. I haven't been to different ones. Ice fishing section comes out way early. And they have the vast selection. They have, they do have Shields brand, but it's not as much as Bass Pro Shop. So they have a wide assortment. And uh, that's what I like. And yeah. dang, do I have a fan around here? <laughs> Should have a fan around here just for number one fan. I used to have an antique fan. One of those old school copper ones where you could chop off your fingers. I think I got rid of my plastic fan, so you're out of luck. Oh, I have a USB fan somewhere. Huh. Yeah, number one fan. One of my most noticeable, I think I got a new subscriber too. What's up? So where was I? Shields, ride the Ferris wheel, go look at stuff, ample different selection. Uh, they try to cycle out. I think this is due to the economy, but they try to recycle, you know, get different things going. And... Uh, so anything new, I think they have, you know, they get pitched somewhere and then they have the main store. So they're more open to getting new items versus Cabela's or Bass Pro Shop. I've seen one thing on the Cabela's site and I was like, all right, it was an underspin, but it was way small. They never got it in stock. So I think you can order online, which is a downfall. But Cabela's actually has it. And uh, a good gauge on it is they had uh, the accessories for Vexilar, which is very important. Just different things the other stores had. And then uh, they got the Vexilar Glow Ring. I don't know if I have that around here. Uh, I got a piece of it right here. So they had the Vexilar Glow Ring actually cheaper than Cabela's too. So, eh, nuts. So, again, Shields hit <laughs> a miss on their customer service. Uh, we were looking at ice augers, and this one guy rolls over from baseball gloves, and I think he was just sent there to see what we were up to. And it was me and my cousin, which... 
he's a bass fisherman. That's sorry about that, but so we have a lot of experience between us. Then he says, Oh, you should go to this lake right here. And we go, Oh, where is that lake? And he was just talking out of his ass. Uh, I don't know. My dad usually drives and it was hilarious. So we tried to call him out on it. Hopefully it's not your birthday. Number one fan. It was your candle. So, yeah, Cabela's, eh, or where was I? Shields, probably the top one. Uh, got a lot of expensive rods. Got a lot of newer stuff that cycle through. But since they change managers in the sporting goods section or the fishing section, they concentrated on fly fishing. And they're holding on to the older stuff. They had, what was the best deal I got over there? Well, they had this for 50 bucks, but it was an online deal. And uh, this big box of fishing line, $9.99, regularly 34 bucks. So they used to have good deals, but again, I go over there, they carry Mr. Crappie, which none of the stores were really carrying in a large amount and uh i don't know ah let's go to the mom and pop stores all right in my area the mom and pop stores there's one way down there and i think it's riverton riverdale and the guy's always watching netflix and i'm like how can you make money watching netflix or they follow me around the store. And the one time my cousin wanted a swim bait, and that was 34 bucks. And they followed me around the store. And uh, finally I had to ask, and I go, Where is this? And he goes, Well, that's a little pricey. And I go, So? And he goes, But it's over here. And he reluctantly showed me. And then I go, Oh, we'll take two. And he's like, What? So $60 on two lures. I was getting reimbursed, but my cousin wanted them. And I was like, ah, you know, that's how easy it was. Just come over, tell me what wipers are biting. Tell me where the walleye are biting. If you're not telling me anything or not helping me, why even be open? Because you can go to the, you know, you can just go to the, there's actually a store, a sportsman's across from them. So I drove over there one day, 30 minutes, and I asked him, what, what's the price? And he got all snooty, and the label fell off, but it was on the next back one. And I go, oh, so it was $4. And I go, you know what? Just for being snooty, not helping me out, I went across the street to the sportsman's, and I found it cheaper. So that mom-and-pop store's probably not for me anymore. They could have a clear, maybe if they're having a going out of sale, going out of business sale, I'll go over there and buy some stuff. But the next mom and pop store story is way down in Richfield. And uh, again, that's probably a main factor. And it was March Madness. He brung his iPad out, set it down, and you could just tell he was frustrated. Me and the other kid, like I say, we just look around at fishing stuff. And they actually had this reel in a bigger size. And uh, they had it for two years. We've stopped there twice. And it's in an Ace Hardware. And I've been thinking about buying that reel. And I've been on the fence. If he just told me a little bit about it, I would buy it. But then he just sits there and pouts watching on his iPad, March Madness. And it's just funny. But again, they had some jig hooks over there that were rare. So that's the good thing about going to some of these smaller stores is they have the old stuff that nobody has or it was discontinued 10 years ago. And you're like, oh, there's my favorite jig. And... uh and then my last mom and pop story is um, 
one store and this kid looked a little off and his speech was a little off and then the fly tying guy goes over and helps him and i was just down the aisle so i was listening to the whole conversation and he kept saying something about braided line and he wanted to go ice fishing and so finally the one guy got upset and left it was pretty funny and then so i slow rolled over there and i go so what are you looking for what what's what's going on here because the one guy stopped helping him the employee actually stopped helping him and i go what's going on and he go he tells me his story and then from looking at him i found out he was special needs you could barely tell it and uh i was like oh okay and then so that made me even talk to him more and i go oh what's the coolest thing you pulled up and he goes a turtle and i'm like what i've never caught a turtle before and he goes yeah i caught a big turtle blah 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 and i'm like cool so i go okay so you're going ice fishing with this line or it's going to be in a colder climate let me recommend this one right here and i go it's not the cheapest one it was like 25 bucks but i go i think that's what you need and what you're looking for because i think he was going back to minnesota to ice fish with somebody what regardless of what you should have helped the poor guy and got him what he needed and uh so he and he goes oh okay cool thanks so he walked i followed him up i was just leaving too followed him up to the cashier pulled out his money paid for the line went walking out the door all he needed was that little extra care or the customer service to be there to help him out the next day i landed a turtle <laughs> so which was pretty rare for our area and i caught a little box turtle so just that little bit of karma for me not even working there i landed a turtle which where i'm at turtles wouldn't be i wouldn't i would say they're maybe one in a thousand i think someone dropped it in from the whatever huh do i have a fan story number one fans hanging out i don't know if i have a fan story uh, i think the only time i use fans or collect fans was i bought that old school one resold it that's when they had the old cords on there made out of asbestos Um, that might be too long. Um, probably the biggest fan I seen was in a warehouse. Man, those things are massive. Yep, the asbestos cords. You have to change those out, I hear. But I plugged it in and uh, it worked. And I was like, whoa. And... Uh, this one girl I hang out with, she actually had the old school plugs that that plugged into. And I was like, man, that's scary. So she probably still has the asbestos wrap power lines running into her house or in her house. And I was like, oh, man. But that was pretty cool. Man, back in the 70s, 60s, you could lick the wall and not get lead poisoning cancer wasn't a big thing now i think you drink soda what not you know everything kills you nowadays so i think the asbestos cords were okay what else did i buy with an asbestos cord oh there was this weird heater and so the light bulb had a uh, a ceramic thing in it and uh so i again it was asbestos cord i plugged it in and i think it was medical but i wanted to see what it did so i put my hand under it and then all of a sudden my wrist started to hurt and i'm like oh man is this some kind of radiation quack therapy 
And then I had to hurry up and Google the lamp. And then I found out it was some kind of ceramic heater for dental or something. So, but yeah, I got to be more careful. So after that, I learned my lesson. Anything with an asbestos cord, I try out on my buddies first before I start messing with it. Man, I, I, there is a resurgence in fans. I used to do, uh, I used to be a picker also. So buy and resell. And I think, I don't know. You have to, there's so many liabilities nowadays that it's, you have to change it out. You have to do this. Burn down someone's house and then they'll sue you. So, yeah. So that's my experience with fans or asbestos cords. The hell? Something stuck me. Uh, man, number one fan, you must be bored to be hanging around on a Sunday. Oh, uh, yeah, asbestos in the brakes. That is true. But so we grew up next to this old power plant and they use asbestos for everything. So they dug up a parking lot and I don't know why they had asbestos in the bottom of the parking lot, but that delayed and everything in the parking lot and it was pretty hilarious i'm like wow that's crazy <laughs> well i'm i just got back from vegas so i had some beer somewhere um but that's yeah, weird policy i don't drink when i'm home anymore so I had to go rent a room or be out of state, and that would be my drinking. Uh, what's my favorite beer? I would say Bud Light, but did you hear the beer has cancer-causing? It's probably the wheat hops they spray with the insecticide. So now the beer is cancer-causing. And then I seen the funniest sign, Bud Light goes, you know what? They have corn syrup inside their beer. <laughs> I'm like, what? Natural light or I can't, Coors Light has corn syrup in their beer. And I thought it was Bud Light that had corn syrup in their beer. So they actually had a picture of Coors Light has. So the sign, first sign read, Coors Light has corn syrup. And I'm like, why would that why would they advertise that then the next sign down the block is bud light is corn syrup free and that was hilarious yeah or what else is a good one um steel reserve steel reserve i don't know that's my new favorite drink i'll get three or four of those and be good and uh the worst thing about beer lately is the 20 packs or the 30 is it 20 or 30 pack because once i start drinking i'm like oh <laughs> yeah when i start drinking yeah there's a big scam i think it's more cirrhosis of the liver would get you more than that but yeah the the 20 or the 30 pack i can't i think it's a 20 pack oh damn here comes 5-0 yeah the 20 pack gets me all the time because i'm like oh there's more beer so now i have to limit down to i think i can drink three tall ones and have a six pack around that way i don't have such a hangover but if there's a 20 pack laying around 
Yeah. I go, well, I'm at 12. We should just keep on going because that's a good idea. And the best thing to watch with beer or used to be is Facebook Live. Facebook Live would have the craziest stuff going on. Uh, I think one of the first times they were, they would be playing music. Somebody in California is a brother and his girlfriend. And uh, they're playing music, smoking and drinking. And then all of a sudden someone chimed in on his thing. He pulls out a gun and starts pointing it at the camera. You know where I'm at. You know where I'm at. And then the girl starts making out with him. And it was sort of weird. And one of them was they were filming a rap video. And they had all these girls wearing nothing. And uh, that was a pretty good. Now they centered it all. Uh, that one guy went on a shooting spree on Facebook. Now they have moderators. Uh, you can't play music and drunk talk or whatever you want to do. So. Oh, yeah, you got rid of your Camry number one fan, didn't you? Camry still holding up. I uh, just did the uh, front bearings, set me back a little bit. And uh, yeah, glad I didn't attempt those myself. What else is going on? I did uh, a transmission flush just recently changed my oil I need to change my power steering pump and rack and pinion but I'm too, too lazy so I put some of that bottle additive in there so hopefully my Camry lasts for one more season <laughs> um, what was nice about facebook live also is you wouldn't have the usb usc fight and somebody would plug it in in front of their tv and you could watch the fight or you could watch the football game and uh oh the next best thing about Facebook Live once was they had um, chicken fighting. So the roosters were over there battling it out, flopping back and forth, you know. And it's the guy that made the Spurs that was doing the live pod or the live feed. And that was probably the best ever. And so he makes the little Spurs or whatever. But yeah, that was another good thing about facebook live is like in mexico they would have the the chicken fights and you could check it out and but yeah now that's probably the bull i seen a bull fight from spain somebody was podcasting that or facebook living that was pretty interesting not much into violence but i guess if that's part of your culture you got to respect it <laughs> oh yeah so maybe the cockfight <laughs> so that's a good one they were over there battling it out <laughs> so there's a uh, fake <laughs> fake news fake bird fighting for I'll probably get kicked off now <laughs> yeah speaking of against violence of birds I'm over here uh, it should be okay, but then look at all this back here. <laughs> yeah, we killed a bunch of birds, and we're over here using it in my fishing lures. Yeah, so the Camry's doing okay. 
I know I have a stamina in here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we need to start out with every podcast with a fan right there, just for you. Oh, there's my battery-powered fan over there, too. Yeah, I think, I don't know. In Mexico, though, so when they had the pet bull fights and the the bulldog or the pit bull loses, they actually have uh, pet bull tacos afterwards. And the one guy I, was, I met randomly this weekend, he's like, that was the cheapest and the best taco I ever had. And he goes... He goes, it was pretty amazing. Bulldog tacos, only in Mexico. But, you know, who's the uninspecting and tourists are probably over there eating weird stuff. Yeah. So I think over in Detroit or whatever, Michael Vick got busted. So that was probably Atlanta. So I think they just throw the bodies in a vacant lot and everything goes to waste. In Mexico, they butcher them. I think China and Laos, Thailand. So we have all these homeless people that are hungry around here and, you know, bitching about this and that. The humane societies are full. The cats and dogs, you know, they could be eating good steaks. Not that I would eat one. I actually ate horse once. But that was about it. That was the most extreme. Yeah, so. You go to Mexico. They may tell you it's something. Carne asada. Or something. And it's not. So just beware. Yeah, almost forgot that. So I'm actually Native American. And uh, so the pictures are on here and I don't think you can pull them up. But. There was no power, no electricity, and this was all the way up into the 80s or the 90s. So it was like a third world country. And uh, there was no refrigerator, and uh, but it was the best taping, tasting meat. There was lambs and goats and horses, and uh, yeah, you just ate everything. I couldn't really eat the intestines and the head. I was sort of hesitant on that. But I heard the cheeks and the eyeballs were the best tasting. But, yeah. So you learn to, if you kill it, you got to learn to respect it and eat it. Oh, I did eat this little peri dog. So that's probably like a rodent. And then some other gal, she brought in some uh, cooey. And cooey's those guinea pigs from Ecuador or somewhere down there. And it had, a, it almost smelled like sheep meat. And I just wanted a little taste, but she goes, no, you need to stick it in the microwave. So I never got to taste the little, little rodents, but I think I did eat Perry dog and I almost ate the little cooey. But what happens is they smuggle that into their luggage. So who knows how long it was on the plane or without refrigeration. But back in the old days, you used to put, let flies crawl all over the meat and you would just air hang it in a cool place. Then you would throw it on the barbecue grill. And man, that was the best tasting. Yeah. 
so now I'm sort of a wussy. I'm like, where's this food? I just can't scrape mold off the bread. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think I would eat a muskrat. I think it comes through in their meat, how it tastes. So they probably eat a lot of the cactails and dandelion roots and stuff. So, yeah, I did find a muskrat, baby muskrat, and I should have raised it. But I don't know. It seemed like too much of a pain in the butt. And I think a hawk or something just tore up his mother. And just by chance, like the baby raccoons or the orphan kids, you know, they usually find me. I feed them a fish or something, and then they go wandering off, never to be seen again. So, but the little baby muskrat I had passed away. But I should have took him home and see if I could raise him. But I think he was still on milk, so I don't think he would have lasted long anyway. But he was pretty funny. Yeah, it just scared the crap out of me. I almost stepped on him. He was that small. I think this is my last one. Uh, number one fan, uh, thanks for making this a success. We're just trying it out. Maybe we're going to do some live views of the fishing. Glad I could keep you entertained. So I think for the most part, if you catch something and you don't safely release it like a fish, unless it's against regulations, I think for the most part, if you're doing all that damage, you should at least eat what you catch or have a little respect. So I don't think there's much respect. People are running around here poaching just for the horns or yeah, it's a weird climate but i'm over here with <laughs> well i hopefully this ended up my chicken nuggets uh i tried to be vegan and vegetarian for a while but yeah so i guess you couldn't wear leather you couldn't have feathers you couldn't have a mink coat Yeah. <laughs> huh. You know, you got leather chaps, you got the leather harnesses, you got the leather horsey masks. Not that I'd wear any of them, but see, you would be outing a lot of people in San Francisco for Pride Day. I did see a leather shirt the other day that was like 4X or 5X, and it looked like an officer uniform. I was that close to buying it just for the hell of it, just so people would talk crap. <laughs> you know, wear it out on one special occasion. But then I would have to buy the leather chaps and to get quality leather chaps with the butts cut out on the back is I think a hundred or two hundred bucks. So yeah, it wasn't worth the investment because you can't wear a leather shirt with out leather pants or leather leather chaps, I would think. So Yeah. Oh, so this is going to give you a kick. This is what I mean when you say leather. So because I had a leather jacket before, but every time someone says leather. <laughs> oh, yeah. Look at Lois. Got the leather whip. She got the leather garter. Look at uh, <laughs> look at Peter. 
<laughs> and then check out that leather mask. So every time someone says you're sporting leather, that's what I'm thinking about. I'm like, oh, yeah, they're freaks. Yeah. Or that could be that latex PVC. Who knows? Well, buddy. <laughs> well, glad I'm going to keep you entertained. Uh, thanks for showing me the chat feature and different things on this. Hopefully, we'll do some more live streams. And uh, I don't know. Maybe you have to drag in a fan expert or something to keep it entertaining. But yeah, as always, number one fan, you rock. And uh, I think Uncle L's out. Take it easy on that water. <laughs>